Hey, what's up, guys? Node Investor here. Time for a live stream update, kicking off the weekend with a little green on the board. Good to see a little bounce action here in the markets. We'll take a look at the charts, of course. We'll look at Bitcoin, Litecoin on fire today, following through after yesterday's little pop. And a handful of others. We'll look at some notable news items. And of course, absolutely, we'll save some time to do some chart reviews, get some names you guys are looking at. I'll look at some names that I'm watching here heading into the next couple of days. And so without further ado, thank you guys for being here. Let's get to it. Looking at the coin market cap first here, uh, of course, a green day, finally a green day, Bitcoin up a little over 5% on the day. ETH a little bit of a laggard here. Litecoin, one of the big winners here today, up 15% in the last 24 hours, followed by Bitcoin SV. Who cares about that one? Uh, Tron holding up well. Cardano having a decent day. IOTA looking good here. Uh, Neo, a handful of others, but green across the board. Very nice to see. Welcome here. Thank you guys for being here today. Zilliqa, I've got an open trade on that one. We'll look at that guy. That one's looking pretty good here, but all in all, positive day. Good to see some um, bounce action here. Finally, after uh, a week and a half of some pullback from the highs. We started last Thursday when we had the failed breakout. Looking at the overall market dominance here, I covered this slightly in my video yesterday. For those of you that caught that, we'll pull that pull that up here while that loads here. Looking at the overall market cap picture here, this is the total cryptocurrency market cap. And you can see technically it's still in an uptrend. Obviously, we have had a little bit of a near-term top we're setting a low. Is this the higher low? Do we just start taking off from here? It's anyone's guess. Um, at this point, it's just looking like a bounce. There are some clear resistance levels to be watching. And, you know, the big influencer on this, obviously, is going to be Bitcoin with over 50% of this market cap representation. And so that's going to be some levels to be watching. Clearly, Bitcoin is going to be the main driver in most of this. But the BTC dominance has started to pull back a little bit, which is positive because it's saying that some of these alts are showing a little bit of uh, bounce action versus Bitcoin, a little outperformance on the way up here. So we can see that here. BTC dominance peaked just over 60% on May 13th and has been slowly drifting lower, not crashing. It's not a pure alt season per se, but you certainly are seeing a little bit of outperformance in some of these alt names. So very nice to see here. Um, I will keep an eye on the questions. I've got the chat window up open. So if you got questions, comments, I'll try to keep an eye on that here and get to as many as I can during the course of this stream. Uh, before we get started, as always, I'd like to uh, do a little talk on how you can support the channel, a little bit of what I have to offer, and then we will get to it loadinsiders.com is the alert system. There's a lot to this, not just alerts. Um, I've got certain indicators here that I use as a risk measurement. Certainly you get the alerts here, what's moving, uh, what's overbought, oversold, some proprietary alerts, power pivots, on the move, all that kind of good stuff. You get to see all that here. You also get an automated watch list, which I will generally use as my step one when I'm going through the charts, what's moving, what's good. I always start here just to see, hey, what's popping up on this? This is based on a BMI index, which I created here. And of course, uh, you also get access to my training videos. Uh, you can buy these separately at nodeinvestor.com if you'd like to do that. But while you're a subscriber to the alerts, then you absolutely will have access to all of this good stuff. Plus, get an invite to our Slack channel and join our community of crypto enthusiasts. And so there you go. The links are in the video description if you're interested. Nodeinsiders.com. So go check that out. All right, guys, let's take a look at these charts here. That's Zill. Let's start with BTC here, and then we will go from there. So looking at the Bitcoin dominance, uh, looking at the Bitcoin chart, excuse me, nice little pop over that 8K level. Let's zoom out here a little bit. Obviously, we had that false breakout last Thursday. Was that last Thursday? May 30th? That feels like so long ago. Um, but false breakout. Uh, for those of you that have been following along, you know, I cleared the deck here at basically 8,600 and change uh, when we started to see this thing fail. I went live with the Node Insiders private stream. 
and then uh, have just kind of been waiting it out. Took a little bit of a bounce trade here over the last few days. Didn't do a whole lot. It was a, a small trade, but here in the last two days have been taking some nice little alt trades from the USD and USD tether side. Now Bitcoin is popping over that level I was watching. There's two key levels to keep an eye on here. Looks like it made a little bit of a double bottom here, found some support around the mid 7400s, retested that here yesterday and started to push higher. The buying volume is not tremendous, especially compared to some of the sell side volume that we've seen here over the last week, but it's still pretty good to see that we're starting to clear some resistance. Again, in the big picture, just to be you know, totally fair with where I, I am in terms of the big picture, I still think there may be some more downside to go, but this is probably just a bounce. However, doesn't mean I can't take any trades to the long side in the near term. So that's what I've been doing here. Uh, first level I was watching was that 7850 level. That was a level that had been the wall here in the near term that was also bumping up into these moving average pairs on the four hour chart. If you go to the daily chart, that was bumping up to the 10 EMA there. And finally popping through that here, a little bit of a pause. And in this last hour and a half, seeing that push through, now approaching 8,100. The next level I've been talking about is 8,200. And that is right, let's put that on the chart here. It's pretty close right there. Um, and that lines up with a little bit of you know, this support back here. There's also a, a round number that we had seen back in here, right? That was my breakout point was at 8,200. That was the level I was watching for this move to break through. It did and had that run to 9K. And so 8,200 on the way up is going to be the level that I'm watching once again. And that's where I personally think we'll see the bounce start to fade and then we'll go from there, right? Um, I hope I'm wrong and I hope it continues right through it. But that's what I'm looking out for here in the near term. If we look at the daily chart here, let me clear some of these markups here for us. If we look at the daily chart, uh, the 10 EMA is right where price is at right now, right at 8,100. And that's what we're seeing a little bit of a pause. Above that is the 8,200 mark that I'm talking about. So we're kind of in that window. Now, the good news is during this pullback, it's really just been a pause. It did undercut these key moving averages for three days. Price is trying to get back above the moving averages now, but the moving averages never inverted. If prices can start to stabilize here and kind of go sideways, this will just be a big consolidation at that point. Very positive if that's the way it ends up playing out, if this turns out to be the low of this pullback. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not so hopeful on that personally, but uh, if that turns out to be the low, that would be extremely bullish to see just such a mild pullback and in the big picture, considering how far prices have run since April, to see that kind of land as the low and start to meander and build a base would be extremely bullish. Um, I've talked about you know potential levels on the way down if it continues lower. Uh, looking at just kind of the retracement levels, 382 is still down here near 7200. That's really the first level I'm watching out for. And then the mid sixes to the upper six Ks is the level I'm still thinking we could still see. So you might still see a six on that chart. Hopefully not, but we might still see a six on that chart. And I'm thinking in the big picture, that'll just really set up a good higher low, especially if you go to the weekly charts, right? Look at the 10 EMA in the weekly chart. It's still way back here at 6,900. It just needs some time to digest. Best case scenario for the bulls, in my opinion, would be if it just pauses up here above 7,300 and just kind of chops around, builds a little bit of a flag or something on that weekly chart. You know, kind of like how it did back here where it just sat around for three weeks before starting the next leg higher. That'd be the most positive thing, but no doubt prices were stretched to the upside. The RSI on the weekly was over 80 at one point. It just needed a breather, it was due. But all in all, the market's looking positive. The last several months have been very bullish, looking good. We're seeing headlines. There's a lot of things coming out, support. Now you're looking at potentially Apple and iPhones, iOS supporting a native crypto wallet. Uh, and it's just a lot of good headlines. Don't get me started on Facebook's global coin. Not a fan. I know some of you guys think that's going to be good for the space because it'll bring people into crypto. But will it really? I mean, is that really what we consider crypto people if they come in because they're chasing Facebook global coin or they're using some app? Um, I don't think so, personally. It's not the same category of the crypto adopters that we have in the space now who, you know, who understand a little bit more of the tech, who, you know, can struggle through working a hardware wallet and all that fun stuff and know about exchanges, but 
you know, for the folks that are not going to be interested in doing that, right? My mom's not going to care about setting up a treasure or a ledger wallet, uh, you know, and, and just doing, and I even have friends who are interested in buying crypto, but, and I just tell them, hey, go set up a Coinbase account if you don't want to struggle. And even then they're kind of going, ah, oh, that might be a little too much for me. I don't want to do that right now, you know, so who knows, but that's, uh, that's my thought. I, it's probably no secret. I'm just not a big fan of the, the way Facebook does things. And so for me to see them issue a quote unquote crypto, uh, it's just not, uh, not my cup of tea. Now, how did I get started on that tangent? You guys are direct. <laughs> you can see I've already, I'm already going off course here, but anyway, looking at the charts here, we're definitely due for a pause. There's definitely some positive headlines. Uh, we'll see where things go. If we go to the one hour view here, just really dial it in. Um, this is a, you know, this is a, a nice little move here. It's certainly not, I wouldn't consider over bought yet or anything. It's just kind of edging its way higher, trending higher, moving averages are, you know, starting to trickle higher. This is the one hour view. Certainly you got to look at the daily chart because there's some, um, you know, some headwinds to be keeping an eye on here, but we'll see where things go over the weekend. On the way down here, of course, if we look at the alternative scenario, this bounce peters out here and starts to roll over. Um, getting back below 7,500 would be bearish if it starts to break this near-term support. I know there's some wicks back in here, but generally the way that works is uh, they don't hold up three times if it's just a little bit of a wick. So if it starts to close below 7,600, 7,500, then at that point, I would expect you see a break of the lows here. So those are the levels that I'm going to be watching here going into the weekend, basically 7,600 on the way down and on the way up 8,200. And then above that, you know, you're looking at 86, 85 or so. So Bitcoin, not too bad here. A little bit of consolidation mode here. Let's talk about Litecoin because that's really where we've seen a lot of the action here today. Uh, the trade has been relatively quick here. I was just looking for a quick trade here into the next few days, but hit both of my targets uh, very quickly here. The first target I was looking at was 115, and then now we're approaching 120, which is the highs that we saw set way back here at the end of March, or excuse me, May, way back here, like a week and a half ago. Um, and so that's what I'm looking at here, bounced into that 120. I took a little bit more off the table there and just going to look for a little bit of a pause or a dip to reload on the trade. Now, big picture, it still looks very good. In fact, it looks very bullish on this daily chart. If you go to the big picture daily chart, um, you could just see it's just trending higher, making higher lows, higher highs, breaking this little bit of a pullback that we saw. The last two days have been strong, and it looks like it's about to clear above that 120 level. And then over that, you know, you're, you're talking several levels on the way up, 150, 170 of the targets I'm looking for as we head into the happening, which is coming up. 59 days left for the happening Litecoin block reward happening. Um, you know, it certainly has been a catalyst in the past. It's a big catalyst for Bitcoin. And so it will have an effect most likely on prices. Uh, my expectation is that it's going to be the typical buy the rumor, sell the news. Um, just because, you know, the happening, it's a huge deal for Bitcoin. It's kind of a big deal for Litecoin, but I don't think it's going to be something that's like hugely sustainable as far as the catalyst goes. Uh, it will be in the near term. So something to be watching. And I think, you know, right now at, at this point, the estimate is August 6th. So we could see some nice run up going into July and maybe even through July into this halvening. So at some point, I think price will top before the halvening as some of that begins to get priced in. And, you know, that's what I'm going to be watching out here. I still going to stick by my 175 estimate in terms of where we could be by the halvening. But of course, if Bitcoin decides to roll over and cause some headwinds, that will absolutely have an impact even on Litecoin, as we saw here just in the last couple of days. So for now, looking good. If you're still riding the train, the rocket ship, congrats. If, you've, uh, if you're not, you're looking where potentially could this pause. Uh, this 120 level is going to be interesting because that's a little bit of a resistance zone. I personally would like to see it pause here, start to flag out a little bit, start to pull back, let these moving averages catch up on the four-hour chart. It's pretty extended on the four-hour chart from the moving averages. So if it sits tight for a few candles here or even dips down to the 115 level again, that could be a place uh, that I may look at it for a re-entry or to add on some more there. So definitely looking good from that perspective here. If we go from the 
LTC BTC pair. That was really the early indicator that this was setting up nicely. You could see here when prices started to pull back, it held up relatively well. Many of the alts uh, took a little bit more of a beating on the way down. And let me zoom in here for us. And you can see Litecoin was just sitting really tight versus Bitcoin. And then here yesterday, before it officially broke out on the dollar pair, it started to pop through on the BTC side, really started to show some breakout action. Uh, and that was really the early signal there. And of course has just continued higher and outperforming Bitcoin on the way up as Bitcoin rallies. Now versus BTC here, this is the level I'm watching here. It's approaching the next target, basically the 0.15 to you know, 15.3, 15.2 is the next resistance level. And we're approaching that window right now. So again, just like the dollar pair, it's bouncing into resistance. I think a little consolidation here would be healthy. It could certainly just blast right through, but a consolidation here would be healthy. And on the BTC pair, that would also correlate with the pause here into resistance. And so, you know, there's a couple levels that are lining up. I'd like to see a pause here. I think it'd be good to kind of set up another leg higher over the next uh, few days or week or so. Litecoin, all right, what else do I have on my agenda here? I've got a few names that I wanna cover before we get going, and then uh, I'll certainly turn it over to you guys to throw out some names, and we'll go from there. What do you guys think about the BTC ETF? There's, you know, there hasn't been a whole lot of talk about that here in recent weeks or months. Uh, is it still gonna happen this year? Are we still gonna see it next year, ever? Who knows, right? Uh, something to be watching out for here, but I still think it's coming. It's just a matter of when. Um, you know, when you think about the SEC, the CFTC, and some of the concerns they have, one of the big concerns clearly is price manipulation on the exchanges. You know, do you use a basket of exchanges to set the rate? Do you use something else, an index, right? That's going to be kind of the first thing that they need to figure out. The second, um, which is not really talked about that much when you think about Bitcoin ETF, but when you think about the supply and who holds the tokens, right? I mean, Satoshi or the group behind Satoshi or whoever that is, right, uh, is, is said to have a million BTC just by themselves. Uh, and there are other very large holders of BTC. And so I wonder if, they're hesitant to issue a uh, Bitcoin-backed ETF because if you have one individual or one entity potentially could dump a million BTC on the market if they wanted to, uh, that's huge, right? I mean, that that is very significant. So I don't know if they're even factoring that in or thinking about that, but that's just something I've been thinking about going, you know, that would be wild to see like, okay, Bitcoin ETF comes out and then uh, they could certainly dump on the market if they wanted to. Now, most likely there'd be some OTC or something, but hey, something to think about especially if you're holding bitcoin right like the first if it ever happens right like if the genesis block or or if there's ever some movement on the on the, any of the bitcoin the original bitcoin i think that would spook the market right if that if that bitcoin finally started to move people would say what the heck <laughs> satoshi's moving his btz right it's gonna dump uh, that's that's my thought i don't think it'd be bullish personally i think i think it's bullish if if that just remains locked up forever versus suddenly it's you know supply out there that could come into the market so uh just some thoughts there all right let's look at the charts here there's a few names that i'm watching we're talking btc we talked litecoin bitcoin cash so bitcoin cash btc i very quickly covered this one in my video yesterday uh, not a lot has changed really just watching this level i'm not doing anything with it until it can start to hold above that 0.053 on the BTC pair. Don't really care what it does on the USD side, just mostly watching it from the, this perspective. Let's move on, XRP, XRP BTC first. Um, it did finally break out. We were watching this little bit of a, you know, it's kind of an irregular, I wouldn't call it a cup and handle, but it kind of had that signature, right? Where you have this, this high, you have a pullback, you have another high, slightly lower. And that really started to form a little bit of a handle, a little bit of a flag, if you want to call it that. And it popped right through that yesterday. Nice little push higher. And right now, pulling right back to these moving averages. And that breakout was pretty nice on some good volume here. A big wick at the top, of course. There was certainly some selling. But it was just a very fast move. So it's not surprising to see that. We'll see if it can hold up. I want to see it hold up above this 10, 22 EMA pair. Um, obviously, the, the must hold level that, that has to stay above is this support level back here. If it fully retraces and loses that, 
that's a failed breakout, usually very negative, and at that point, price starts to accelerate. So that needs to absolutely hold from this point going forward. Looking at it from the USD side, because that is where I entered my trade yesterday, um, I saw that pop here to the upside. Let me zoom in here a little bit. And really what I was looking for, I saw this. I had some alerts set. They started going off. I was away from the screens. By the time I got back, it was way up here. And I thought, I'm not chasing it. That's just a little too extended near term. I thought, maybe we'll see a little bit of a flag or a pullback. And I'll jump in there. The pullback was actually a lot deeper than I thought. I had a quick retracement right back to that breakout point. You can see the line here. And that's really where it pulled right back to. Um, I didn't buy that dip, but once it started to bounce up, then this is where I entered my trade just above that level. And then at that point, gave me a really clear level to put a stop. At that point, I'm using that pullback as my stop loss level, just slightly below that. And right now the trade's still working out. It's in the green. And what I'm looking for on the way up here, first target is going to be in and around that 44 cent mark, 43 cent mark, uh, which we are now approaching. And then next target up will be a little bit wider, this window here, 45 to 46 cents is what I'm looking for on the XRP pair. And then above that, if we can break out, I mean, you're looking at the highs here near 47 cents. If you zoom out, big picture, chart looks pretty positive right on the daily chart. Let me zoom out here for you guys. Uh, this is the daily USD tether pair on, on XRP. You can see the current price point here is a little bit of an inflection point. This has been a low for several times. It's also been a high here for several times. So if we can start to push out of that 47 cent range, uh, you can start to see some momentum very quickly into the 50s and then even 60 cent level. So definitely one to watch here near term. Going to the daily chart, the RSI is nowhere near overbought. I mean, it's got plenty of room to run if it starts to take off. So definitely one I'm watching here. From a trade perspective, you know, I've set my targets much lower just because, as I mentioned yesterday, right, Bitcoin is still not confirmed that it's made a higher low and is ready to start going. And so the way I'm treating this is, you know, this could just be a short-lived bounce. I'll scale out into that resistance. And then at that point, if it gets going, if it breaks out, then for me, that's a new trade. I'll look at it on a higher time frame, you know, on the daily chart and maybe take it as a swing trade at that point. So for now, trade's working out pretty nicely. Uh, we'll see how this one plays out here in the next few days. But uh, if I get a little bit of a pop here today, I'll certainly take some off the table. What were my other ones here? Uh, Zill. Zill was another one here. I'll go Zill BTC first. Uh, Zill BTC cleared a little resistance here. You can see you had a pullback from that level, rallied right up to that, pulled back, started to make a little bit of a cup and handle type pattern here, of course, and then made a break above that resistance here a few days ago and just has been marching up. Not a huge pop yet, but you know, showing some good relative strength versus BTC. And with Bitcoin moving up here today and this going higher, uh, that just looks pretty good all around on the USD side. And that, again, that's where I entered my trade. Not a big mover, certainly in the green at this point, but we'll see how this one goes up for now. So Zill still on my watch list. Let's take a look at Link. Link was uh, looking strong yesterday. It looks like it's consolidating here. Had that little bit of a march higher on the hourlies. Has just been pausing here since yesterday. See if we can get another push higher on the daily chart. Um, pretty good little bounce off of that. Another one I have on my list right now. Oh, yeah, we, we didn't do ETH. Let's go to ETH real quick. Um, ETH, all right, so let me clear some of this stuff here. So big picture first, right? Uh, pretty solid consolidation all around. It is choppy, but if you look at the range it's been in here since the high back here, you know, it's not a bad consolidation, right? Big run after, you know, moving from basically 150 to 280 or 270 really quickly, I needed a breather. You can see the RSI is still marching down, still drifting lower here. So, you know, not done pulling back, but it did hold up here about 49, 48, 49, looking like it's bouncing a little bit. Also held at the moving averages here on a closing basis here. One day below the 22, the rest have been above and the 10 EMA is still above. So that's looking positive. But we zoom in here a little bit. The level I was watching from a little bit more of a tactical entry point uh, was at 253. So it, 250 was kind of the resistance level. I wanted to see it hold up above a little bit more than that. It's right at 253 right now. So I'm liking the way this one looks. Of course, it's getting a boost from a little bit of a pop in BTC. But if we go to the ETH Bitcoin pair, uh, this is really why I was liking the way it was looking. 
sorry about all my markups here because I look at this chart a lot. But it's still holding up, right? It's starting to curl a little bit, still holding up above the support. And really, that's the level to be watching from the Bitcoin pair, right? This year, if it breaks below that, it almost did on the day Bitcoin had that failed breakout last Thursday. It did wick below, popped right back above. So far, has been holding. But a close below that, if it starts to really get below, what is that? Basically, the, you know, 3,000 even, right? Starting to live below that. That's going to be negative. It's going to look like a failed breakout. And this line here is a significant support. It was support back here in early January, February. It was resistance back here. There was a wick back here. And so this has been a little bit of a zone where the battle has taken place here recently. So that's the level I'm watching. Looking at it from the USD side, 250 is kind of an inflection point. And it's trying to get back above that right now. And then above that, you know, getting back over the 270 range would look like it's starting to break out and heading higher to the 300 level. So that's it for ETH. Of course, if ETH can get going, generally will bode well for the overall altcoin market. Uh, IOTA. I'm liking the way IOTA is setting up here. Um, it did have that pullback. Again, this was news driven, that initial pop, you know, some announcements, but it pulled back. All things being equal, technically speaking, it pulled right back to this moving average pair on lower volume, which is what you want to see on these pullbacks. So it was a very constructive pullback. Looks like it's turning the corner in the big picture, right? You had this big downtrend, made a low here, made a lower high, made a higher low, and then finally pushed through about a week and a half ago. And this could be the next higher low. And what you want to see is a push through that. So, you know, starting to turn the trend there in the big picture, starting to look like, hey, maybe this is going to, you know, start a little bit of a broader uptrend channel that it could start to trade within. So that's what I'm watching on IOTA. Definitely keeping an eye on it here. Let me go to a different chart since I messed that one all up for you guys. Um, IOTA dollar pair here, another way to look at it. Liking the way this is holding up as well. Today's action gets it back over the last three days, clearing a little bit of resistance. That's positive. But what I want to see it do is get back above that 45 cent mark and hold. If it can do that, it looks like it's starting to get back above resistance. It tried here today, wicked above, came right back in. So it's round in the corner, but I want to see it get back above that, you know, 45, 46 cents and then start to hold. There's some resistance back here. You can see this prior support that gave way, uh, that's going to be the window to be watching on the way up. So, But all in all, it's looking pretty good, looking like that might be the pullback on IOTA, maybe finally setting a low. I found some good support around that 41 cent mark. All right, let me see here. I know I've got a few others. What, uh, what names do you guys want to look at here? I'm going to take a swig of water while I drink some of this. You know what I like to do also, which... I don't spend enough time doing on the live streams is a little bit of the educational side of things. So if you have any questions about either technical analysis or trading, uh, let's talk about that here. I'll spend some time doing some of that, some examples. Um, that's always fun. As you know, I like to talk about that. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, we'll do EOS for sure. We'll do Tron. Bat. What's showing up on our list here while you guys do that? Neo, we'll do Neo because Neo was looking nice here today. Um, somebody asked for Cardano earlier. We'll do that guy. Black coin icon. Oh, BNB. Let's take a look at BNB. How do you recognize a top? Good question there. There's some good uh, cell signals that I like to use. Right. Looks like we've covered a lot of these here. So we covered Link very quickly. I won't probably cover that one again. Raven, let's take a look at that guy. All right. So I've got a few on the list here from you guys. EOS, Tron, Bats, Icon, Neo, Cardano, Binance Coin, Raven. He was on the look at Adam. Might as well just cover all three, right? Adam, Matic, one. <laughs> we'll take a look at some of those real quick. Why not? Does BTC look like it's forming a death cross? Um, good question. I don't know. I don't. 
as you guys know, I don't usually follow the whole bull, golden cross, death cross stuff. Um, and the reason is, do I have a trader diary? Uh, yeah, I do, a trade journal. Uh, I maintain two trade journals. Um, well, it, I wouldn't say I have like a one single journal. It's, it's kind of broken out into different pieces. Um, for stocks, I use a, a site called TraderView. It's a subscription-based service, but it's tremendous when it comes to giving you analytics on your trades, your real-time profit, loss, swings, all that stuff. Uh, that's really good. For crypto, um, I do a little bit more manual tracking on that side. I still have charts and kind of P&L graphs that I will do. And then I, I also use um, like Evernote for just kind of journaling thoughts, um, summarizing things, looking at all that kind of stuff. So it's split up a little bit, and it just depends on the market. But it's huge. I think it's definitely very helpful in terms of helping you improve as a trader, if, especially if you're an active trader, you certainly want a journal. Like if, if you're a highly active trader, you're not using a journal, um, you're missing out on some potential lessons and some thoughts, especially when you go back and review some of the trades that you've made or just kind of what you were thinking at the time. Uh, it's very eye-opening. So definitely something I would do. Um, so on the, the whole question around the BTC, Death Cross, Golden Cross, all that stuff, right? Um, I'm just not a big proponent of the the traditional moving averages that they use for that, right? The 50, 200, or even if you're using the 100. Uh, just for the way I do things, it's just much slower. What I do is I will use a 1022 on the weekly to confirm what I think I'm seeing, right? But at the end of the day, I go based on price action. So what I mean by that is, let's say we were looking at Bitcoin back here in April right the the bull the gold cross didn't happen until way back over here when people started talking about it but at that point it had already broken out it was a big volume breakout i mean at that point i'm not using a moving average to can you know to give me my buy signal i'm using price action and volume and all that stuff but a couple of weeks later um and i mentioned this a few times in one of my some of my videos was the 1022 ema crossover on the weekly in the past that's been a good signal to confirm major trend changes on the bull and the bear side. And we saw that happen. This is the first time back in April, mid-April, right? That was the first time since March of 2018 that the 10 EMA had been above the 22. And so for me, that's my golden cross. I'm not caring about what the 50 or the 100 day or anything like that's doing. That's me. And if you look at that here, we're nowhere near crossing bearish at this point. In fact, they're still trending higher. They're a little expanded because it needs to pause a little bit. But there's nowhere near a death cross, right? Uh, for me, the death cross was back here when you saw both of them roll over. This was back in March that confirmed what we were already seeing happen in the price, right? We had already topped after that parabolic move. And then if we zoom out, let's go to Bitstamp real quick. Zoom way out. And we look at history, right, in, in Bitcoin. Um, the last time we saw, you know, from the beginning of history, right, there was a a bull cross back here, went, 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 never crossed the bearish until right here. And then there was a little bit of a fake out, a couple of crosses here. And then it went bearish, 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 bearish. And then you saw a bull cross uh, right here. And then that was it. Never came back under until the end of the move back here, right? So uh, you can see that it's been a pretty good signal from that perspective in terms of it doesn't give you a lot of noise, right? When it crosses over, it's a slower moving signal. And as long as they stay cross over, generally that's been the signal. So for me, that's the way I'm using it. Um, but again, I'm not gonna wait until they cross over to make buy or sell decisions. It's generally more of a confirmation of what I'm already seeing, right? And yeah, so good point, Razil, right? And it just all depends on your time frame, right? If you're a long-term holder, then you may use something like that on daily or weekly chart. If you're a intraday trader, a swing trader, like who cares, right? Because at that point, I'm making my trades based on what I'm seeing at this level. And so you have to make the signals appropriate to what your specific strategy is. Uh, and that's something that is very confusing sometimes because you see a lot of traders, you know, and I'm a proponent of using multiple time frames, but sometimes you see a lot of traders doing too much switching between time frames, right? They may look at the daily chart, 
They may say, oh, it's it's going up, it's bouncing here, and then they're going to go to the four-hour chart. And I've seen guys on YouTube, I'm not going to say who, but like every one of his streams, he's like, let's look at the weekly, let's look at the daily, let's look at the 12-hour, let's look at the four-hour, let's look at the one-hour, right? Uh, and he's, I don't know what his time frame is that he trades, right? So it's like, what, what time frame are you looking at? Um, I'm not against using any time frame. It's just you have to have some consistency. Me, my primary time frame is the four hour. I'll look at that. I use the daily as a higher time frame just to kind of set the tone, what's going on, big picture. And then I go to one hour for a little bit of tactical entries and all that good stuff. Five minute charts, that's just not my cup of tea. On the stock market, I live on five minute charts, right? Just because I'm intraday trader. But in Bitcoin, I mean, unless I'm using leverage or something, I'm just not going to trade five minute. But look at this beautiful chart here on the five minute. If you're if you're scalping here and you're doing you know leverage trades, you're seeing this go. And this is a nice ascending triangle breakout. Um, <laughs> somebody you guys know who I'm talking about. This is a nice ascending triangle breakout, right? It's you know if I'm on leverage and I'm going five minute, then yeah, this is great. I can do here and I can buy on the breakout and I can set my stop, you know, where it makes sense to put a stop and maybe set a two to three R target. And call it good, right? But at that point, I'm scalping 50 or 60 bucks on leverage, right? So it's a whole different strategy. Um, so it just really depends. You just need to figure out which time frame are you going to use, what's comfortable for you. Uh, there's no right answer to that. Just you know, if you if you like doing BTC of five minutes, that's cool. 15 minutes. If you're you don't have time for that, you just want to do long-term holds, and you're probably sticking to daily charts, right? So everything in between. Um, so. That's the answer between the gold cross and all that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? What's your strategy? Go with something else. I mean, don't put a lot of weight on one specific signal per se. Um, I'm not using bars. I'm using candles. All right. Uh, let's see here. Don't overthink it. Yeah. And, and I'm not knocking you or anything. I'm just saying, like, that's that's some good stuff there that... You guys are bringing up good points. Okay. Uh, you made 45K on that Litecoin chart. Sweet. All right. Let's see here. Let's get to some of the... Uh, CNBC got one right with Litecoin. Damn it. <laughs> oh, you know, sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. All right, let's get to your charts here. Uh, I'll get back to some of these trader questions. There's some really good questions in here around like managing stops and some of that other stuff here. How do you look at tops? Uh, good stuff. But I'm going to cycle through some of the charts because I know some of you guys are waiting. So let's go through EOS. I'm going to cover EOS, BTC, and then dollar at the same time or you know, look at both pairs. So on the BTC pair of EOS, Interesting inflection point here, right at the same level, right? This back here was support. This line I've got drawn here, you can see it held, 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 finally rolled over. And then here in the month of May, on the way up, let me clear that for us. You can see that was, oops, there we go. Resistance there, finally blew right through here, had a wick on the way down that touched it to the penny before popping, and then that was the top. And undercut that so here we are testing that here a little bit um you know this was some front running into the announcements um it ended up being that social media platform and you know some other things coming down the pipe but for now it did look like it made a good top if it can get back above the moving averages on the daily chart that'd be positive so on here you're talking basically 8500 ish on the btc pair that's what i'd like to see it get over to start turning the trend uh, eos dollar it's going to look a little different just with the action in Bitcoin, but you know, same top here, pulled them back. Looks like it may have set a little bit of a low here. Volume on the way up hasn't been very strong either, so you know, kind of cautious on that. I'm thinking it might just set a lower high and then pause, but if it could bounce and then kind of sit around here in around that seven dollar mark, that'd look positive for me on the EOS side. Uh, and that's big picture. That's kind of daily chart, right? Short term trades certainly there's some some bounce trades to be had look at the one hour chart nice little bounce on the one hour chart from the exact low which i wouldn't have bought that low anyway but from the exact low right up 14 percent. so certainly some trades to be had the level to be watching here in the very short run today ish <laughs> today yesterday maybe uh was 650 
that was a level to be watching on EOS back over that. So any pullbacks to that zone, you might consider a little bit of a throwback entry. So if it, you know, can pause here, maybe pull back 650, 660, that could be a secondary entry on potential move higher here. Big, you know, on the hourly, it looks like it certainly has you know, broken that downtrend. So that's nice. See where it goes from there. All right, so that's EOS uh, Tron. Let's go to Tron Dollar. So Tron still looks good from the big picture perspective. I mentioned this breakout that it had over that three cent mark, and that was a long time level, and it's still holding up above that, right? Uh, it is choppy here, but it's still holding up. So we'll see if we can get going. The moving averages are still trending higher. Um, so all in all, still positive. Let's go to the four hour chart here. Looks like it made a lower low here, kind of wicked. Uh, so really the resistance level that would really start to signify for me that that was probably the low and starts turning the corner is about 0 0.35, 0 0.36, right? That little you know half cent mark in and around there. Getting back above that would really start to confirm what we're potentially seeing is a break of the downtrend. Still holding up. Uh, I'm liking Tron more from the big picture, right? I'd be looking at this one more from like kind of a longer swing, if you will, just because it's broken above this level. And for me, as long as it continues to hold above three cents, I'm thinking there's more upside, you know, four or five cents in and around that range. So kind of looking at it from that, not so much uh, a shorter term trading perspective. Uh, let's look at it BTC real quick, see if that signifies anything there. Uh, you know, certainly looks like, you know, you can make a case for, hey, that's a break of the downtrend here with turning the corner, making higher lows and higher highs on the daily. So that looks good. All right, BAT, BAT BTC. Basic attention. Somebody asked about this one, I think, at our private stream on Monday or Tuesday, whenever I did that. Um, and I've got the line marked out here, and that's probably the same for me, right? 4,500 on the BTC pair. I want to see it get above that. Above that starts to look good. Icon. Icon, and Icon's really been a been a disappointing one here in recent months. Um, I've, you know, had that huge sell off. Was looking like it was going to get going. Just really sold off into May, and has just kind of been living down here. Honestly, it looks bare flaggish, right? Unless it can really pop higher right now, looks like it's pausing, breaking lower, and then maybe even forming a little bit of a bear flag here. So, uh, I'm not too enthusiastic about this one until it gets back over that 530, 540 mark. Over that, then it looks like that may have been a little bit of a low being set right here. But again, I'm going to wait until this guy can start to confirm and show a little bit more positive action. How's it look from the dollar pair? You know, dollar pair is not bad. Um, let me clear these. These are my upside targets if it pushes higher, but let's clear that real quick. So, you know, getting over that is going to be the level to be watching. That may confirm with the breakout on the dollar on the BTC pair. So about 44 cents. Neo. Neo BTC. All right. Neo BTC here had a good day today on the dollar pair. Um, we're looking at it from here. I was watching it back here because I was in a trade and never broke out, of course. So let's kind of reset the thing. Um, and it's it's been choppy. It's been this has been a tough one here in recent weeks, right? Because like it's gone, fails, makes lower high, fails. Nope, it's back, double tops, fails. Right? It's kind of like uh, has not been an easy trade unless you're doing some scalps on this guy. Uh, but once again, maybe doing a little bit of a low again here around that 1480 level. So that looks good. It's going to be some clear resistance there that it needs to break. On the four-hour view, certainly a good case to be made that it's turning the corner, making a trend change. The volume on this is above average, getting back above the moving averages on that push. A little bit of a pause here. It looks like it wants to get going again. So not bad. It could make for a good quick trade again. The way I would approach this if I was just doing a quick trade is I'd keep my stop probably at the 10 EMA at most low of this flag. Uh, that's only about a two, two and a half percent stop at that point. And then I'd be looking for a target below these two highs, right? So uh, two R multiples right here. 
and then a three R is going to get you basically at the highs. Uh, that'd be about a three R right there. So you know, it wouldn't make for a bad trade again. Those are tiny percentage gains, right? You're talking like six percent upside for two percent risk. So not exactly a a monster trade, but you know what I do with stuff like that is, if I really like the trade, I'm going to take it, uh, and then I will position size accordingly. So uh, basically. I will up the position size to offset the smaller percentage, if that makes sense. So still within my risk management rules, of course. Cardano. Cardano. Oh, sorry. You know what? Let me go back. Let me go back. Neo dollar. That's tough. This is choppy. I mean, daily chart looks good just because it's still... You know, still generally trending higher. You could argue there's a little bit of a channel forming there, but um, it's just choppy. It's a tough. It's a tough one to to call here. All right, Cardano. Let me start with Cardano dollar. I'm liking Cardano here. It was looking good back here. It was really close to breaking out. Just couldn't break above that uh, 0.098 level. Had a good pullback. Is this a higher or lower high? It could be. So I'd be watching out for a potentially lower high in this range here above 0.09. And then uh, clear support right there. So if it starts to take that level out just below $0.08, cents, uh, then you're probably looking at you know between 7 and $0.06 cents on the next leg down. So something to watch there. Um, Cardano BTC. Cardano BTC looks much nicer in the big picture. This is the four-hour chart, but if we go to the daily, you know, big drop. Is this like an icon, bear flag? Maybe. Could be. But, again, above 1140 or so looks really good because that would be a big a big breakout here. Um, you know, they were talking about some uh, a new roadmap coming out for this project. It seems like Cardano is always releasing a new roadmap, though. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> It's the long, the long road, but uh, yeah, this one I, I like the way it's making higher, higher highs or higher lows. Excuse me, kind of wedging into this level. Uh, maybe try to set up for a little bit of a break. So, eleven forty is probably the level I'm watching here. Let's go to Binance Coin. Binance is never going down ever again. So I was talking about Binance being a little toppy here a few weeks back. Let's go to the BTC pair first. Um, and it's still just choppy and ugly. Go to the daily chart. Now, still just very choppy, very mm -hmm. ugly from the daily chart on the Bitcoin pair, maybe making a lower high right here. Uh, it's just, it's hard to say on this pair. Very, very hard to, you know, to say this is a clean support resistance level. Uh, but if you go to the dollar pair, I'm liking the way that one's looking a lot better, a little cleaner. You can see it had that strong rally from, you know, basically 19 up to 35, pulling right back, trying to find some support just below that moving average. But I want to see you break this downtrend. So if we go to the four hour view, that's the level I'm watching. A lot cleaner looking here. Uh, I would certainly look at a break of the downtrend that corresponds with a little bit of a break of resistance here in the very short term, above 3250 or so. And at that point, I'd be using something like, you know, $30 as my stop or so. Raven. Nice little pullback on the daily here. So this is this may be hard to see. Let me see if I can zoom in for you guys. What I like about Raven here is you've had a couple of things going on here. Uh, first, you had this you know big push higher. Of course, that failed right at the moving averages, and then it started to pull back. It did make a higher low, retested this low back here. Um, and then on volume, look at the, the uptick in volume as prices started to push higher again. Good to see. And now you're seeing the opposite, right? You're seeing a downtick in volume as prices are starting to pull back. In addition to that, you've got a bullish crossover on the daily chart, 10 EMAs back over the 22. And then you've got you know this support starting to come in here right at those moving averages. So this might not be a bad place to look at it from a potential secondary entry point. That pullback right now is landing just above the prior high. So there's some support starting to show up here. 
I'm gonna have to put on put it on my list here. This is certainly looking like a potential pullback entry. And the way I play the pullback entries, uh, there's two ways, right? Obviously, you could buy on the front side and just kind of anticipate that it pauses, and you buy it on the dip. The alternative is you wait for a backside to be formed, and you start to buy on the way up, right? So, um, and that's generally my preference, just because you don't know if that's the low. It's always kind of hard to guess. So the way I would look for it is if it starts to push higher and clear some of this near-term resistance. So for me, that'd be about 840. Then start looking at it from there. And then at that point, I would have a pretty clear stop loss level, right? I'd be looking at you know, this little zone back in here. That'd be my stop. Uh, so I'd be looking for a swing to the highs as my first targets. And from a risk reward perspective, that would probably within my realm, my rules, let's see. I'd be going for about a six or seven percent stop for about a ten set. Uh, not even it's only about one point six R. Not even that much. So I'd have to probably tighten the stop up or look for a better entry on a pullback. So that's uh that's RVN. Um, all right. Quickly, I'm going to cycle through some of these others, and then I'm going to get to some of your other questions and some of your other names here. Adam. Adam, uh, I don't know what to say about this guy. It's this one's tough. I mean, there's. I don't want to call it manipulation. There's just a lot of pump and dump on this guy. It's just it has those quick spikes and then pauses. I mean, you can see here, right? Look at these wicks. I mean, top of the wick there, bottom of the wick here. I mean, that's wild action. Big pop, big pop. And this is the one hour view, mind you. Uh, so probably more of a quick trade candidate. You get those eight percent spikes, right? Here's a ten percent spike. Uh, if you're looking at a bigger picture, it is holding up pretty good. I mean, you got uh, you got a pause. And it's letting the moving averages catch up here. A little bit of a flag forming. So if it can start to push out of this range, that'll look good. And then at that point, you know, you're looking at the highs as your next target here. How's it look from the dollar side? Dollar side looks pretty good. Looks like it held some support at the prior wick high on that pullback. That's where it landed. So it's right at the moving averages, holding up well. Matic. Uh, personally, I think this is just a bounce off of the moving averages. I think it's going to set a lower high somewhere here and then roll over. Who knows? That was just a crazy move on Matic. Zill. All right, so I did Zill. I'll go back to Zill. It was one of the early names I covered here on the stream. Looking at Zill, um, it did break out yesterday or maybe today. You're over this small level here. There was two levels, right? First was a break above this downtrend. Uh, had a solid break above the downtrend on volume, which is good on this green candle. And now it's just kind of edging higher. Pulling back here right now, a little bit of a throwback potentially to that breakout point. See if it could get going. And then after that, um, it's got a little resistance on the way up here. Let's go here real quick. A little. Looks like a lot. Um, you know, first you got this prior high, which it cleared. So if it can continue to hold up above that, that's uh, that's one to look at and then you know kind of a big range here and here so got some ranges to go at all right let's go to btc here real quick bitcoin i saw something about bitcoin versus gold and some potential correlation there i've not looked into that let's go take a look at that real quick i know gold you know i i definitely keep an eye on it especially around fed days just because um for me, gold just trades like a currency, so very similar to the Forex markets. If you see big moves in the euro or the dollar, then gold seems to move. So um, that's how I trade it now. Is, is this starting to correlate with Bitcoin a little bit? Maybe. Let's go look at that. Uh, what are we looking at here? So this is BTC. A bit of a pause. Nice little break into the 81 range. Um, let me do this here real quick. Very quickly. Actually, I'll do it on this chart here so we don't mess anything up. Let's go take a look at the gold BTC charts. I'll save my time. There we go. And let's do BTC Coinbase.
my back. Do you hear me? <laughs> All right, hold on. Before we get started, um, everybody is good. <laughs> I love Facebook Global Coin. Um, what else can we say here? YouTube sucks. <laughs> Jeez. I was like, you know, it's Friday. Screw it. I'm done. No need to say bye. <clears throat> Ugh. All right. Anyway, I don't know what happened. Where was I? Oh, we were looking at gold and Bitcoin. I was trying to set up both charts at the same time, and that's when it just bombed out at me. I wonder if that had something to do with it. So, oh, well. Hey, you guys don't care. Let's keep going. Uh, let me see here. Where's my comments? Let me pop those out again. We'll get those going so I can read what you guys are saying. So I can hear all the beautiful comments. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. I've been talking about BNB or the hype IEOs. <laughs> I know. <laughs> SEC raids my office. Ooh. Okay. Hey, I'm kind of glad I never did my Node Coin ICO. Right, it would have probably been delisted by now. Would have been banned. Okay. Looks like I'm backed up. I'm just kind of reading the reading the comments here. Okay, cool. Let's go. XRP. I did this one at the beginning here. XRP, BTC. Well, let's go dollar here first. That was really the the way I entered it. Dollar's looking good. It's still just kind of edging up here. I've got a open trade on it right now. I bought here on this little pullback on the dip. I had that nice pop yesterday early in the day. I was waiting for my screens at the time, but uh, when I saw that pullback, throwback entry, that was me kind of thinking, all right, I'm going for it now. I uh, took a little, waited for it to bounce up, but that's where I started to get in. So not a huge trade yet, but it's, you know, it's working. It's edging up slowly. No, don't talk about the UFOs. <laughs> you didn't see anything. All right. That was funny. I'm going through to see. I'm not sure if I missed any other names here that uh, you guys wanted to look at here. I'm sure I did. White coin popping, busting that 120 zone, still looking good. Daily chart looks great on Litecoin, by the way. Let's go to LTC on Tether just to have a little bit of a clearer chart. But um, I mean, just a nice breakout on this. Looks like I'm about to get hit on an alert there that I had at 120. Beautiful daily chart. And look at this on the MACD side. Um, let me see if I can pull that up here. Here we go. You get this little curve, right? The last three histograms on the daily chart are just starting to curl higher, signifying this is probably the potential low. It hasn't crossed over in the green yet, but once it starts to tick higher for me, that's usually the good signal. And then, of course, taking out some resistance here in the near term. So nice. All right, OMG, we've not seen OMG yet. Let's go take a look at OMG. Uh, I'll get to your question there, Cracks. Good question. Um, OMG, apparently I had this line on my chart here from a little while back. Looks like it's still holding up that level there. Higher lows, maybe, but it's kind of wedging, right? So for me, until it can break out of one of these, one or the other, I'm going to wait. It's wedging, and technically, right? If if you're looking at the the way it's come uh, the way it's come off of this um, downtrend, you know, technically it's a bear flag, a little bit of a bearish pennant, if you will, right? It's got this big drop starting to flag out. But, you know, I'm, I wouldn't write it off, especially if it starts to push higher. For me, with the higher lows being set, if it starts to clear this level, then that looks positive for me. So 
definitely won't write it off. But to be honest, it doesn't look very positive right now. Doesn't look too good. Um, so there's a question here from Crack. Hey, I'm 17, interested in crypto. What's the first thing I should really do to get into trading and stuff? Um, if you're new to crypto, and I don't know, you know, kind of your experience, but if you're new to crypto, before you even start trading it, right, just kind of get comfortable with the ecosystem, wallets, security, all that stuff, 2FA, um, just kind of be very cognizant of that first. There's just so many scams. There's so many security risks, if you will, uh, and people have lost their money. So definitely get good with that if you're new. Um if you're looking to get into just trading, trading per se, my advice to everybody, and there's you know there's no one right, one way to do it. There's a million ways to do it. My way is not the only way or the best way. Uh, it may not be the best way for you, right? There's always so many ways to do it. Uh, and I've gone down the path of just like try this, try that, try that before I kind of settled on what works for me. Uh, but if you're looking to get into trading, my probably the the strongest recommendation I can give to anybody that's looking to get started is find a way to either paper trade or trade with a very, very small amount, right? Um, and that's small as a relative for everybody. So just whatever you think you're willing to risk, trade with like 20% of that. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Like you will likely lose it. So it, it kind of doesn't make sense when you first get started, but you, you hear this often and the saying goes, don't worry about making money when you first learn to trade worry about learning how to trade, right? And that's because you need to focus on the process as opposed to the profits. And so many people will trade based on the P&L statement as opposed to, you know, what the chart makes sense and price action and all that stuff, right? And, and it's very psychological, which you will learn. Uh, so just something to make note there. I would just trade with a very, very small amount until your process starts to get a little bit more consistent because at that point it's a matter of scale right whether you're trading 10 bucks or 100 bucks or a thousand bucks or ten thousand bucks per trade the process is really all the same it's just a game of scale at that point right so um and if you're new to trading there's some books i would recommend i've posted i've done some book reviews on my channel i don't know if i can find them here let me see if i can pop them up um but I've done some book reviews in terms of top trade, top books for technical analysis, top books for traders covering, you know, psychology and strategy and all that stuff. And so I would look into that. So I'll see if I can find them and then I'll post a post a link on my on my notes here. Um, what else can I recommend? I mean, you got to understand the charts. You got to understand technical analysis. You got to understand how to execute a trade on on an exchange. All the exchanges are a little bit different, but the terminology is mostly the same: market order, limit order, stop loss order, all that good stuff. If you're new, best thing you could do is just dive in, my friend. Just start learning, learning, learning. Um, you know, shameless plug: join my community, buy my course, join the Slack group. There's a lot of people always willing to share ideas and to help you learn. Uh, at the end of the day, you just got to do it. You can read until you're blue in the face. And certainly, I still read. I read a new book every every month. But at the end of the day, you just got to do it. That's why I say just start small. All right. Uh, holding a full-time job. Trading is certainly difficult if you're holding a full-time job. Um, so swing trading is usually good for that. Or... Uh, if you're looking at like just trading for an hour a day or two hours a day, then maybe look at the stock market at the open or the close or even the Forex market around some of the opens. You get a lot of experience doing that way. Do you manage accounts for a percentage? No, I will not. Um, you got to be licensed for that and you got to, you know, there's just so much regulation around that, unfortunately. So just can't do that. Yeah, and it, it, that's a good point. You can program the trades if you're uh, if you're working full time. There's tools available to help you. Kind of, here's my entry, here's my stop, here's my loss, here's my profits, um, and that uh, that will help you at least to kind of automate a little bit, right? The, the technology is great nowadays. So you certainly don't need to be 
at the screen all the time. It just kind of depends on how much you want to go. But you will be, I promise you. You're just going to get so addicted. <laughs> you get so addicted, you're going to love it. All right, let's go take a look at that. You know what? While we have this over, I'm going to I'm going to pop over to the the spy real quick here. Um I guess the stock market is still open, so I want to see how it's doing. I stopped trading for the day. I was done after the morning session. I had a very strong morning session. I mean, just a beautiful drive. Apple, Apple killed it today. Uh, it's just kind of been going sideways. I think it's done. I stopped trading. I haven't done anything here. I'm pretty much done for the day, for the week. Probably not going to do a whole lot. It's Friday. Um, Apple was a beautiful trade this morning. Uh, just opened, gapped up strong. I actually traded Apple yesterday here at the close. I was watching it all day. Finally had that pop. Took a little trade into the close. And then today it opened, gapped up, and just monster move. Look at that. Went from 186 to 191. Beautiful. And, um, yeah, now it's just kind of sitting tight. So we'll see. All right, let's get back to the charts here. I'm going to go through some of these real quick. I'll probably go another, let's call it 15 minutes, and then we'll uh, call it a stream here. Um, on the move, some of the names that interest me here that we haven't covered. And we looked at that. We looked at that. Let's go to the watch list real quick. You know, 24-7 is very exhausting for crypto. What I would rather have personally, I really would like if crypto traded around the same Forex markets. So Forex closes like, you know, Friday afternoons and then it's done for the weekend and then it starts trading on Sunday afternoon, my Sunday evening, which is, you know, the open in Asia. That would be great. If you could at least get a day and a half off. And for the most part, that's pretty much what I do now. Like at the end of the week, just because I'm trading stocks all day, I'm trading crypto all day and all night. <laughs> um, by Friday, Saturday, I'm just like, I got to just take a break. Sometimes you miss a trade. But well, it is what it is. Um, Cardano, like well, we covered most of these here. I'm not seeing anything on the list that's probably not already covered. Maybe we'll look at Nano Status. There's a name from yesteryear. Enigma, a lot of small cap names. We covered Zill, Iota, Ontology. Oh, we didn't look at Ontology. Let's see what that one looks like. Uh, Nam, Stellar. Oh, Stellar. Nobody asked about Stellar. Kind of surprised. Let's see here. Um, Stellar. So I was looking at Stellar yesterday just because what I was watching here was a little bit of a range break here. Sorry about all the moving around here. Um, you know, it found a clear support level. And it tends to move in sympathy with with um, Ripple, right? It just has that XRP kind of pairing. Not always, but very often, just like Neo Ontology, sometimes they move together. Uh, so I was keeping an eye on this one, Ripple started to pop. Clearly, XRP is the, the stronger name right now, but this one's certainly worth watching. Uh, I'm gonna wait until it actually can start to hold up a little bit better and clear some of this resistance. You can see, this last candle bounced right to that level and pulled right back. Um, not a bad entry here along these moving averages, so that might not be a bad place with the stop right there. Definitely one to watch here. Certainly not the stronger one, but um, looking pretty good here. If you look at the dollar pair, um, I had shared this here with the Slack group yesterday. I didn't take this trade, but this was an idea I posted saying here on the dollar side entries basically here. Uh, first target back here around 13.4, second target there. Looks like you're about halfway to the first target, so uh, not bad. Could be uh, could be setting up there. I would, at this point, maybe tighten the stop up a little bit to like 12.3 uh, 12, or something. So stellar. Uh, let's see here. Question on... Um, Yeah, 24-7. I like the 24 hours. I don't like the uh, seven days a week. It does make it unique. And, you know, and technically, right, like it, it's very unique from that sense. And it's truly a, it's kind of its own market, central, decentralized. Um, you know, all the exchanges have to agree to not do that, which I don't think is going to happen. Uh, what I do find interesting, though, is um, Eris X, which is, I think, Fidelity, if I'm correct, 
you know, they're launching an exchange. I've signed up as a beta user on the exchange, you know, and they have hours that are very similar to futures and Forex. So RSX will actually be closed on the weekends at this point. I don't know if they're going to change that. So it's real interesting to see that they're adopting a similar model. Um, and, you know, if I, if more of these Wall Street backed exchanges start to do that, then you may see the industry move in that direction. That'll be interesting to see the liquidity over the weekend start to change. At this point, you know, I definitely factor in price action over the weekend because it matters, right? I know some people are saying, oh, you exclude Saturday and Sunday and your charts. And I don't do that because if it's trading, it's trading. Price is price, right? Like, why, why exclude two bars just because you think lower volume trades that day? You know, it's like, that doesn't make any sense. So uh, same with Forex, right? Just like if you're trading Forex, I mean, there's, there's peaks and valleys of volume, but that's because they're, you know, certain pairs trade around certain regions, but that doesn't mean you exclude, you know, those those hours of the day, right? You can see the forex market here. You get the volume spikes during during the Asian session, then it slows down to European, and then you get the volume spikes again. But it doesn't mean you exclude the price, right? So that's just the way I see things. Cool. All right, what else you guys want to look at? Um, you can send alerts. Yeah, I use I use the trading view alerts a lot. I mean, I pay for the premium version, so I'm using this a lot. I get them sent to my phone. You can get them on your email. You can set alerts on price. You can set alerts on indicators. You can set alerts on all kinds of stuff. All right, so determining the top. So there was a good question on the Slack group too that's kind of along these lines in terms of how do you determine the trend change, right? Like how do you know when a trend is changing? You know, are you just looking at the 10 EMA? Are you just looking at any moving average? The 50 EMA was brought up. Uh, the 50 EMA on the four hour view lines up very close to the 10 EMA on the daily. Uh, so I do use that as a guide. Let me, let me kind of hide the other one here. It may be hard for you guys to see, but there's a gray line here on my chart. That's the 50 EMA on the four hour view. Uh, and this tends to be a good signal in terms of just kind of saying, is price above or below it, right? Generally, when it's above, it's trending higher. When it's below it, you know, it's kind of under pressure. Um, clearly, right now, where price is below it, so the downtrend is kind of there. That's a very simplistic way of doing it. And, it, and I'll show you how it lines up with the 10 EMA on the daily. Look, at, let me kind of circle this real quick. That's the 50 on the four hour. If we go to the daily chart, here's the blue line. That's the 10 EMA on the daily. So you can see that it's basically close was, you know, in terms of price. Here's the 50 on the daily, still above it, right? So people will use different moving averages. They'll say, oh, if it's above the 50, then um, you know, I'll, you know, it's long term, all that good stuff. The way I do it, and I do have a video that I that I've made on this, right? So if you have access to this, um, I talk about it a little bit more on this video here. Technical analysis, moving averages right here. I talk about how I use them, which ones I use, what they tell me, right? Um, and the reason I use a moving average pair is because it, there's no magic number, right? You can use a 10, 30, you can use a 10, 22, a 12, 26, a nine and a 13, whatever you wanna use, right? It, it just depends on your strategy, but um, I use a moving average pair because the direction of the moving averages tells you a lot about the trend, right? And where price is relative to those moving averages. And so if we zoom out and just use the daily as a simple example, right? All the way up, moving averages were heading upward, right? Even though price was up and down, up and down, moving averages were still trending higher and they were positively correlated, meaning the shorter moving average was above the longer one. Now you're seeing this turn, right? The short-term moving average is now starting to trend lower and the 22 is starting to go flat. You haven't had that bearish crossover yet, but at this point, right, you got a couple of days saying, all right, the trend is potentially starting to turn. Now I line that up with bullish or bearish reversals, which we saw on this day, right? You had a breakout attempt on high volume that quickly reversed and it was a bearish engulfing candle, just really undid the last three days, and then had that bounce action, made a lower high, 
once the low of that day was taken out, that's a confirmed trend change for me, right? The combination between you got a bearish engulfing reversal, it's kind of a red flag. Hey, this may be a top. Look out. You got a bounce, a lower high, and then a lower low. And then price undercuts that. Moving averages start to drift lower, right? The combination of all of this stuff working together is how you begin to paint the picture of here's the top, the reversal, right? There's not a single indicator that's going to 100% of the time give you that signal that says, when you see this 100% of the time, it's the top. And when you see this 100% of the time, it's the bottom, right? There's just markets are a little bit more complicated than that, <laughs> unfortunately. And so it's a little bit of a combination of both being able to read the price action and being able to see, okay, how does this line up with some other potential things, right? I line that up with the fact that, hey, the daily or the weekly is like, ridiculous extended RSI was through the roof you have this big doji print at the top like there was just a lot of signals that saying maybe we get a trend change here doesn't necessarily mean that's it it's like this is the top of all tops right it's always anyone's guess where that happens but it could mean hey maybe this is a low and then we start to kind of base out and then go from there um, so that's one way to look at the top you know obviously the top in 2017 was a different animal it was a parabolic top parabolic blow off top uh and you know this was a little bit different because at this point you know you look you're following the j curve the parabolic j curve and you're just kind of looking for a break of trend at that point you know it's going parabolic but it starts to break and looking when it did break i mean it was vicious right just broke and just like literally went from nineteen thousand to ten thousand you know in a flash right it was several days so you know, those are the, the ways to do it. Um, obviously, when things are going parabolic, you know, you start selling into strength as opposed to waiting for the backside just because it could be pretty quick. But uh, there's a couple ways, right? And then same goes true with the bottom. Um, and generally, bottoms are a little bit more of a process, right? We saw this one had that steep drop, a little bit of a low, kind of bounce, meandered its way. But, it, you know, started to put in a little bit of a low. And then up, up here, you start to see confirmation where moving averages start to go higher. And they never crossed over. Right. If you look at the 10 and the 22 EMA on the daily chart, you had a crossover way back here and it never crossed bearish. You know, I mean, it just stayed positive until it still hasn't crossed bearish. right? <laughs> and so, I mean, that was a good crossover there and that was kind of a good signal. So, you know, those are the tools that I use in terms of finding a top, finding a bottom. Um, volume is a big indicator for me. Right, you get these volume spikes where it starts to signify potential distribution, right? Because you got to remember the markets go through four stages, right? There's there's a accumulation, right, and then there's the markup, and then there's distribution, and then there's markdown, right? And all markets go through that cycle, regardless of the time frame you're looking at. If you're looking at a one hour view, a four hour view, daily, weekly, right? Um, they're going to go through that cycle. And what we started seeing here was accumulation back here. You saw the markup, right? Now you're seeing potentially some distribution starting to take place. And then you may see a little bit of a pullback. And then we'll go from there. So um, you know, just some market theory there. Again, my way is not the only way. There's a million ways to do it. You can use Ichimoku. You can look at cloud. You can look at, um, you know, I use the, I have a trender setting on my charts where you know you can look at certain things like stochastics and you know adx for directional change and the crossover and you know what the levels mean i mean you can really deep dive into this uh but these are pretty rare that i pull up some of these other charts just because i keep it simple and for me simple is better if you have like 10 indicators on your chart it's just going to get really confusing and uh, you're going to start to have mixed signals All right, long-winded answer, which probably didn't even answer the question. <laughs> um, all right, let me see, 15 minutes delay. I'm just reading some questions here. Yeah, crypto is like nowhere near anonymous. That was the big selling point at the beginning. It's not anonymous. In fact, it's 
less anonymous than cash. It's the most trackable currency you can have. BTC, seeing a little bit of a pause here. How's ETH doing? Holding up above that 250 level Litecoin. I did scale out of most of that. For those of you that are on the Slack group, I've posted that uh, before the start of the stream. I literally put an order at 120 and got that filled. So I'm going to wait for a little bit of a pause or a pullback. See if I can get it. If not, I'll just buy on the next breakout. Okay. I think that's going to do it today, guys. So if you missed the beginning, yeah, Monero's pretty good. There, I mean, there's certain some anonymous coins out there, but just generally speaking, I mean, by definition, right, blockchain is just not anonymous. Said but true. All right, nodeinvestor.com and nodeinsiders.com. Check it out if you haven't. And if you want to join the Slack group, there uh, you will get an invite with the subscription to this. Let's see here. Um... Waves, God, Waves has been so weird. It's been so spiky. I just actually stopped looking at it, so I'm not sure. Yeah, that big wick. I wish the exchanges would fix that. Hit those big wicks that just kind of really mess things up. You saw it back here. Um, some exchanges would. I remember when Coinbase had that flash crash and people bought ETH for 10 cents. Some people sold it for 10 cents. <laughs> um, they fixed it. So I wish Binance would do some of that. You get those wicks. And to the upside, too, sometimes you get those big pops. Um, I, I can't explain. There's literally a print or something that happens at this point, and it just does that. But, I mean, in terms of, like, did it actually trade down there? I mean, there might have been a trade at that point, but, like, it was milliseconds, right? It wasn't, like, thousands of coins traded at this value way down here, right? All right, I think that's it, guys. Yeah, stop hunting, man. I hate that. You get those stops and they take you out. Cool. All right, my friends. Thank you for being here as always. We'll see how the weekend plays out. Nice little bounce action here today, of course. Be cautious. The downtrend potentially remains, certainly on the four-hour chart. You know, it's still looking like a little bit of a downtrend. Moving averages are crawling higher. 8,200 is the next level I'm watching on the way up and on the way down. It's got to hold above 7,500, 7,600. Below that, things look a little dicey. So something to be watching out for this weekend. I think that's it. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend. See you in the next one. Take care, everyone.